Oh yeah, baby. That's a beautiful clutch. Oh, come on, mom, don't bite me. Hey, good morning everybody, welcome to the vlog. Remember yesterday when I said you might not see me today? Well, I tell you what, I just didn't wanna skip a day of vlogging. So basically what I ended up doing is I'm gonna work all day today and then I'm gonna edit the vlog tonight this vlog that I'm filming right now, probably till about one or two o'clock in the morning, and then I have to leave at 6 a.m. in the morning for this long trip back and forth. But that's okay, I just didn't wanna skip a day. So I hope you guys have an amazing start to your day. It's gonna be really awesome here. I'm gonna take you guys on a little egg hunt. Now we pull eggs quite a bit, but we don't actually look for eggs. I don't know if there's gonna be two clutches or five clutches or 10 clutches, no clue. I'll take you through that process, and then we'll pull some eggs, and then I am gonna take a little break this afternoon to spend some time with Laura and uh, get ready for tonight so that I can get ready for tomorrow's big adventure. Again, we're just traveling to Champaign, Illinois, there and back really quick. And when I say we, I mean me. I don't know why I said we, but regardless, it's gonna be a quick trip in, out, and Lori's gonna vlog here back at the shop tomorrow, so you guys won't miss some of that action and all that type of stuff. So what do you say we have an amazing day and get this day started? All right, so oftentimes you guys see me just pull clutches of eggs, and you may wonder like how I know where those eggs are. To be totally honest with you, Lori is the one that usually checks the red tags, which are our lay tags. And I've talked about this before, where we basically put a tag on that says shed and then do. And basically what that means is that that female has shed, which means that seven to 10 days later, she should lay eggs. So the date after, of course, is seven days. It doesn't mean she's gonna lay that day. It just means that that's approximately when she should be ready to lay. Sometimes they go four or five days after. Sometimes they go one or two days early. So whenever we're in the general range of that date, we check, and then afterwards she just puts one of these little blue stickies on there, and that kind of tells me, all right, well then that's the, where the clutch is. So uh, we're just gonna go through and start checking the snakes that have the dates that look like they might do. Like for instance, this Mexican black king. Looks like it's a possibility for a clutch, and we will check, oh, there you go. Oh my gosh, look at that clutch of eggs. That is a beautiful clutch of eggs. And that's pretty awesome that literally the first cage I opened had a clutch of eggs. Again, I guarantee you that's not gonna be the case all the way through the time. But hey, that was pretty cool. I couldn't have planned that better to be honest with you. So I'm just gonna put a blue tag on this and then I'll go back after we've checked all the snakes and, uh, and then I can just pull eggs, which makes it just a little quicker rather than going through checking, pulling, checking, pulling. You get my idea? So anyways, let's keep checking. Uh, this is an, uh, a barren Cow King, and you can see she's full of eggs still, so obviously she hasn't laid eggs. Uh, this is an albino high white. She's out of the box and full of eggs, so she hasn't had eggs. An albino Cow King is in the box, but there are no eggs. Uh, and again, oh my gosh, now after I started the day out by pulling my first clutch, I'm like, dang, now it feels bad when I open these clutches. This is exciting. Oh, this is a rhino rat, but nope, she's still out of her box and she has not pulled. I'll check this one even though she's not even due yet. Nope, and she's out of the box too. This one might lay. No, gosh, she is literally, that girl, I guarantee you, just judging by the way she's nestled in that box and the fact that I know rat snakes typically lay right around that seven day mark, uh, I guarantee you she's gonna lay eggs. So tomorrow, hopefully Lori will be pulling a clutch of eggs from that girl right there. Uh, Albino Nelson's milk, well, nope, it's out of the box. Anything here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Uh, we'll check this one, although I doubt if it's gonna, nope, it's out of the box. Yeah, like I said, you get a real good feel where a lot of times you can go through and check pretty quick. And you can see a lot of these don't even have dates yet. And that means they just haven't shed. So that makes complete sense. All the rat snakes, nothing here, nothing there. So, okay, we're on to corn snakes. Check these guys. No eggs. Whoop, let me just check real quick. Oh, no, there's a clutch. Yep, there's a clutch right there. All right, so that's our second clutch of eggs. Oh gosh, and I opened that one up and I was like, nope, there's no eggs in there. That's why you gotta check a little bit more thorough. Yep, clutch of eggs there. Yep, clutch of eggs there. Okay, we'll check this girl. Nope, she's out of the box. No eggs. Just make sure there's nothing there. Check this girl up here, you guys can see way up here. She got a clutch of eggs? Yep, there's a clutch of eggs right there. Nice. 
<laughs> it's kind of funny because to be honest with you, I saw that clutch of eggs by looking in the view of the camera because I couldn't see. I'm just not that tall. This girl was actually due a few days ago and hasn't laid yet. She still hasn't laid. Uh, you know, and that, that's one thing that does happen with snakes is sometimes they call it denosia, which is egg binding. Uh, typically an egg bound snake won't actually egg bind until they've laid one or two eggs and then there's usually like a twist and an overduct, sometimes a tear and an overduct, or maybe a blockage of some short sort. But usually if they haven't even laid one egg, very seldom is that what we would call denosia. So uh, the fact that she hasn't laid any eggs just tells me she's really lagging behind for whatever reason. And uh, she'll probably eventually lay a clutch, let's hope so anyways. Oh, she's laying. Okay, now see, this is a perfect example. I'm glad that this opportunity came up. Is that when you find a girl that's actually laying eggs in the time, we'll put a blue tag on it and we'll say laying and then mark the actual date. But you've got to be very careful because that can actually cause egg binding when you interrupt them. If you startle them, sometimes they'll like kind of stop laying and that can cause egg binding. So when you do find an animal like that, you quickly just gently shut that drawer and leave her alone. And then don't check her till tomorrow. So she has all day today to get comfortable and lay the rest of the clutch because once she starts to retain eggs then it's a problem and then i would say honestly this is the bummer is uh about 70 percent of females that egg bound either have to have surgery or sometimes they perish because they just can't pass the eggs so uh we don't want that to happen but with this girl i think we'll be completely fine because we caught her we we're able to get her in and just leave her alone just a handful of more cages to check we'll check these guys but i don't think that they're gonna I think they're a little early yet to be totally honest with you yeah, she's gonna lay probably in a day or two. Uh, definitely not ready yet, but she is really close. Again, this girl is due the exact same date, but she's not even in the nest box. So again, that kind of gives you the idea how things can really change, you know? Females can be due the exact same date, but one is in the nest box nestling down ready to lay eggs. The other one hasn't even looked for a nest yet. So that just kind of goes to show you how this stuff works. Oh, yep, look at that, that's a beautiful clutch. That's actually what they call a terrazzo corn. And look at that gorgeous clutch of eggs right there. Whoo, that's nice, good job. So I'll mark her. And then lastly, we've got a phantom corn. That does, does she have eggs or no? Nope, no eggs, but man, she is loaded up. So, uh, okay, so that's it. That's basically how we check for eggs. We go through, we check everything, we mark the blue dots. I've got one more blue to put on here, and then we'll get our egg boxes and we'll go collect some eggs. All right, so now we can circle back to the beginning and see how many snake eggs these guys have. So again, this was the Mexican Black King, and you can see what a beautiful clutch that is right there. Look at that. Whew, that's nice. Come on, mama. What's going on, girl? Oh, she looks great. I mean, and that's a nice big clutch of eggs from that girl. Let's see how many she has. There's two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten good eggs. That's really good. And again, she's big enough now where she'll easily double clutch and probably give us another eight or nine here in another month and a half, you know, six, seven weeks. So that's pretty awesome. You know, I'm really curious. You know, I wonder how many people that watch the vlog actually don't keep reptiles. I actually love the fact that we have a lot of viewers that aren't reptile keepers per se, but they just love the vlog. They love this crazy lifestyle, inspiration, whatever the case may be. And don't get me wrong. I love the fact that our base is reptile lovers like me and stuff like that we want that for sure but i'm just curious can you guys do me a favor down in the comments and let me know how many of you guys keep reptiles and how many of you don't keep reptiles and if you don't keep reptiles what is it exactly that you like about watching the vlog i mean i again want this vlog to be a kind of you know a, a lifestyle vlog you know the fact that you know myself Lori, noah and, and all the crew you know do something really unusual breeding reptiles and being around reptiles all day but uh, i don't want it to be a reptile vlog I've said that a lot of times obviously today is a lot of reptiles because we're collecting eggs and stuff like that but we do a lot of other things and so I want this to be a little bit more you know my my main channel snake bites is really a snake channel I don't expect a lot of people to watch that aren't into snakes but I hope the vlog expands a little bit beyond that if that makes sense so do me a favor and comment down below and let me know what you guys think in the meantime we'll go ahead and pull our next clutch of eggs which happens to be a het albino scaleless corn snake you can see she's wrapped around a pretty nice clutch of eggs. There you go, mama. Good job. Okay, I see one or two little slugs in here, but other than that, it looks like a pretty good clutch of eggs. You can see this is a bad egg here, and there's a bad egg there, but there's two, four, six, eight, ten. So ten good eggs, two little slugs. Oh, look at that clutch right there. All 
right, ooh, they're a little dimpled, but they're okay. Oh, I'll pull this clutch of eggs over here. And I've talked about this before, when you get eggs that are a little bit dimpled in and a little bit dehydrated, and what basically happens is this girl pushed all of the moss to one side, which means that this is a little bit drier in this area. So she probably laid sometime in the evening last night, and it's been, you know, eight or nine hours since she's laid, so the humidity wasn't as high because they weren't covered in moss, and of course they dimple a little bit. Nothing to worry about, you just put them in the egg box. If they need to puff up a little bit, you can put a little bit of moss on them, you can spray them down a little bit even sometimes a little bit of damp paper towel over them uh, as long as you don't drown the eggs so nothing wrong with these guys just a little dimpling right here nothing at all to be concerned about I'd expect this clutch will look perfect within two or three days oh and let's go ahead and count them while we're at it right that's uh two four six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen eggs and that is a het creamsicle scaleless corn snake. That's a pretty nice clutch. So we're on a pretty good roll and off to the next corn snake clutch. Let's see what we have here. Oh, again, nice clutch. Looks like all fertile, which is really nice. Here you go, sweetheart. Good job, mom. Whoop, get out of there. There you go. All right, there you go. Looks pretty good. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 12 good eggs, so, so far the day's been going good. Two little slugs, but I hope that we have, I think we have about three or four more clutches to pull, so let's hope it keeps going. All right, and this is that clutch that I actually couldn't see that I looked into the viewfinder on the camera, so I'm curious to see how it is. It looked like it was a good clutch from what I could see real quick, but I haven't really even looked at it. Oh yeah, baby, that's a beautiful clutch. Ooh, come on, mom, don't bite me. Okay, come on, get off those. All right, good job, mom. Way to go. Take a look at this. Oh, that's a beautiful clutch. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen 12, 14, 15 eggs. Okay, guys, two more clutches to pull. The next one up is actually a Het Strawberry Sun Kissed Corn Snake. So let's see what she's got. Oh, it looks good. Way to go. Oh. I tell you what, it's been a really good egg day. We don't have a ton of clutches today, but uh, the clutches that we've gotten have been really spectacular. Uh, very good fertility and quite a few eggs per clutch. Take a look at that clutch right there. That's beautiful. That's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 eggs. 18 eggs, I tell you what. Uh, I wish every day was like this. Okay, so that was the clip that I thought I was recording. This girl here, this beautiful terrazzo corn snake, pulling her clutch of eggs, which by the way, she had 12 beautiful eggs. Now, in actuality, it's about 12.30 in the morning right now, and I'm coming on to tell you that this was also the part of the clip where I said, hey, guess what, we're wrapping up our work here, it was a great day of pulling eggs, and I'm gonna go and meet up with Lori to do something. I happen to have already known what we were gonna do, but that clip was gone, so, uh, on to the next. All right, so me and Lori have a few hours of kind of alone time, have some fun, and we were originally gonna go and do something outside, but Lori wanted to get sun, and it's, as you guys can see, it's a little cloudy out here. It's there's no sun, so although it's kind of nice out, but regardless, we did want to see Wonder Woman, so we figured the first thing we'll do today, you know, to try to enjoy ourselves is to go to the theater and see Wonder Woman. So uh, everyone says it's a great movie. We'll tell you what we feel about it on the other side. So we've got our popcorn, we've got our drinks, and we're heading off to the theater. This is a brand new theater that opened up just literally right down the street from us. It has the reclining chairs. Lori can get a margarita. I didn't get a margarita. We need to go back. <laughs> <laughs> we all like Lori Margarita, so. <laughs> but uh, this is such a comfy thing. As a matter of fact, every time we come here, Noah actually falls asleep because it's so comfortable. But uh, excited about the movie, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. So just out of the movie, and I tell you what, it lived up to everything that everyone said. I mean, that was an unbelievably good movie. And uh, it's good to see DC Comics finally hit one out of the park. Uh, who would have thought Wonder Woman would be their, their best movie in years? So uh, that was awesome. What'd you think, Laura? Yeah, it was really good. Growing up being an awesome Wonder Woman fan, I didn't know if they'd do her justice, but it was actually a I know, it's so crazy, because you think of like Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. And... <laughs> I know, that's why I was like, oh, she can't replace her, but I tell you what, good job. Like, that was a great pick. She it was, was awesome. It was really good. So definitely, I know most of you guys have probably already seen it, but if you haven't, 
definitely go out and check that one out. So you might be asking, why am I going on these little meetings in Champaign, Illinois? The truth is, it's not really a meeting. It's meeting with some people about developing some products uh, for Reptile Prime, and we're really excited about it because we have a handful of things that just are ready to be taken to that next stage, right? So we need to get with some engineers to develop them and get some R&D going because these things take a long time. So if we start them now, we're probably six or maybe even eight months away from actually having these products available. <laughs> so are you gonna miss me while I'm gone? I always miss you when you're gone. You know, whenever she does that, you know it's fake. <laughs> you, whenever she's like, Mrs. Nice. It's, you know you what? All right, is this what you want? No, I'm not gonna miss you. Why don't you stay two days? <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew the truth was gonna come out eventually. You know what, whatever. You always try to make me look like such a terrible person. I am a very nice and loving wife. Any of you would be lucky to have me. He needs to appreciate me more. Ow! See, and, and that's the problem right oh, there. If she says- big wuss! Cause I just tapped you and you screamed. She hit me really hard. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you fall? I, I did not hit you hard. I bent over in pain. <laughs> oh, I bent up. over writhing in pain. Shut up. <laughs> no, but she is a very, I am very lucky to have her as a wife. She really is. As far as very nice and loving, I don't know about that so much. It's so nice. Okay. <laughs> Regardless, I do always miss Lori when I'm gone. Uh, I wish she was coming with me, but thankfully I'm only gone. I'm not even gone overnight. I leave in the morning and I get back uh, tomorrow night. So. It's not even gonna be that bad of a trip. Lori's gonna vlog back at the shop, right, Lori? What? You gonna to vlog tomorrow at the shop? I need to vlog too. Yes, you're vlogging. <laughs> All right, guys, encourage her down in the comments to, to, to vlog tomorrow. She'll vlog back at the shop, you know, maybe collect some eggs, do whatever snake work she has to do. She has to feed tomorrow. So maybe she'll do all that stuff while I'm gone and I'll kind of keep you guys, I'll take you on the travel. She'll put you back here at the shop and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm back at the shop. It's really not that bad. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Again, I've got probably about two, maybe two and a half hours to edit this vlog up before I wrap the night up. So uh, it was earlier than I expected. I didn't think I was gonna be back here till 11 or 12 o'clock. So uh, it looks like I might, if I'm lucky, get home by one o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll see what happens. So next couple hours, editing the vlog. So I am all set with that editing vlog. I just have to insert this final clip into it, render it out, and then upload it. It's not too bad. It's about midnight right now, so uh, things are looking pretty good. I get to go home. Tomorrow's gonna be an awesome day. It's a travel day, and again, Lori will be vlogging back here. I will be vlogging on the road and bringing you guys along on the journey. I hope that you enjoyed today's vlog, and I hope that you will tune in tomorrow. Remember that every day I upload a vlog, seven days a week at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so make sure you tune in because the YouTube notification don't seem to be working and subscriptions don't seem to matter these days on YouTube so regardless thank you so much for everything you guys do watching supporting commenting liking you guys are amazing and I hope that your day is absolutely incredible I'm gonna wrap up here get a couple hours of these and then hit the road early do me a favor and smash that like button and hit that notification bell for me maybe the notifications will work make sure to be kind to somebody and I promise I will see you tomorrow <music>